Rogers Anderson, Williamson County Mayor. Today we have another special edition, and we have a very special guest, Mr. Cecil Peach. And thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Mayor. I appreciate it. Well, you're one of those people we kind of focused in on and zeroed in on, and we wanted to talk a little bit about Franklin and Williamson County. And we've done a little history on you, and you've gone to the old Harpeth School, went yes. to Franklin High School. Yes, sir. Korean war, war, war veteran. Yes, sir. And you worked at the cheese factory. Yes, sir. And for <laughs> some 30 or 40 years, you've been at Walker Chevrolet yeah. and still working there. Yes, sir. That's fact, right. We appreciate what you've contributed to our community. But let's kind of back up a little. I know you've got two or three children. Yes, sir. Three. Three kids. And do they live here in town? They live in and around College Grove. Uh, two of them does. And one of them <laughs> lives up on Adams Street right above me. And I'm sure you've got some grandchildren. Yes, sir. Good nine. Nine grandchildren. Yes. Any great grand? Two. Two great grandchildren. So girls. All of them uh, girls. No, the the two <laughs> grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Take me back about a few years ago. I won't say how old you were, but uh, a few years ago, the times of Franklin have changed over the last seventy-five years. Yes, sir. very much. And uh, first of all, let's start off. Where was the old Harpeth School? Out on Lewisburg Pike, around, uh, right around where Mr. W.P. Scales lived, right in that neighborhood. And was it a elementary school? First through the eighth. And then you moved down to Franklin, which is not where Franklin is now. Right. It was down on uh, Columbia Avenue. Yes, sir. And you got out of there and you went to the service. Yes, sir. And uh, kind of had a a stand I get did you go to Korea no sir I went to Austria I went to Germany and they sent our outfit to Austria in the Cold War Russia and the United States was about to fight up on the Austrian border and it looks like it's gonna happen again <laughs> it does look like that it does look that now talk to me a little bit about the times back in when you were a boy where you lived on a farm yes sir and that your daddy, your mama, they farmed. And yes, sir. Canned beans. Yes, and Did all those things. Yes, sir. How many brothers and sisters? One did you? sister. Now, you pretty much probably back in those days, um, a trip to the creek was a was a good time. That's a good place to go get a bath. Do a little fishing. Yeah, do a little fishing. Talk to me a little bit about what 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 was a typical day in the life of uh, Cecil Peach back in those days? Well, I usually would get up on Monday morning. We'll start on Monday morning. And I'd carry mother two tubs of water, one for washing and one for wrenching. And she washed on an old washboard. And I'd carry the water about three or three, 400 feet and put it in tubs for her. And then I'd go to the barn and help milk and feed. Then I'd come back and clean up a little bit and walk two miles to Harper School. Are there still people around today that you went to school with? Yes, sir. Some few. Yes, sir. And most of those people, uh, did they go to Harpeth on to Franklin also? Was there only no. one school back then? I'm trying to. No. I'm not know much <coughs> about the Harpeth Excuse School. Excuse me. I, I went to several schools. I went to, from Har uh, Southall to Harper. All right, now stop. Where was Southall School uh, It's out on Old 96. Okay. Out there on, it's up on the hill by, by Berea Church. I know where that's at. Well, there was a school on top of the hill. Miss Elizabeth Carruthers and Miss A.T. Strain was the teachers. Now, that school building, that building uh, long been, since? Been gone long. Okay. Long ago. So then you went to Harpeth after that? Uh, yes, sir. And then I went to from Harpeth to Franklin High School. Graduated from eighth grade at Harpeth. So they came on into Franklin. The um, the times were different back there. I don't I, <laughs> Quite a bit, yes sir. Uh, probably most of the time you uh, walked or, or hitched a ride on a wagon. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember we had a guest on here, uh, Mr. Moody, and they were talking about uh, that there really wasn't a lot of bicycles. No. A few horses and mules. Right. I rode, I rode a horse, and I have went to the store on an old farm tractor, an old Alice Chalmers farm tractor. The man that 
owned the farm and dad was a sharecropper and he worked for it. And I have went to the store on, on that Alice Chalmers tractor. You, your daddy, was he from this area? Yes, sir. Born, born and raised born here in Williamson County. Yes, your mama too? No, mother was from uh, up around uh, Hodgesville, Kentucky. And she moved here when she was 13 year old. And dad was raised down here about Pasco. Uh-huh. And they met, and that's history. Well, and people people got married yeah. earlier than yeah. they do today. That, well, she was, I think it was around 20, 21. <laughs> but uh, now my grandmother come from Lima, Ohio, my grandmother Peach. And her and my granddaddy from Paris School married when, they, when, when she was 14 year old. And they had 11 children. Well, I, uh, of course, big families is what it took back in those right. days to, to work and feed right. everybody, but it, it still took a pretty good size house, didn't right. it? Yeah. They lived on an old farm down here about uh, Forest Home uh, where Eddie Rabbit lived until yeah. he passed away. They lived on that farm. Well, Mr. Coley Brown owned that farm, and they worked on that farm and run a dairy. And as they become grown, they'd all leave and go to Michigan to work in automobile plants. Most of them did. And when uh, a lot of them come back, they didn't like it. And the Army got some of them, the Navy got some of them. And Dad come back, he didn't like it. He didn't like Michigan. So most, I had an aunt that just died there uh, last year, on a one year old. Last one of the 11 children. Mm -mm. And she was how old? 101. 101 years old. Mr. Peach, in um, the early days of Franklin, and when you were a boy in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, um, what what did the guys do back in those days when they were young boys? Hunt and fish and hunt and fish, play work, ball, play ball, play ball, a lot of baseball. Yeah come to town on Saturday night, not Saturday. You had to be in the field till dark. And then you come to Franklin to the theater and could get in down there for 11 cents. Now this is the one that's still downtown now. The now. one that's there right today, they're trying to get going again. 11 cents, you could get in the theater. And I'd work for Dad and he had a 34 Ford. And I'd say, Dad, can I get the car tonight? He said, well, if you close those cockpits on it in the wintertime and bring some water up and fill up the radiator. We didn't have antifreeze. We couldn't, couldn't buy antifreeze. Uh, you could buy that old ethyl glow fried or whatever they called it, and it, uh, w when it boiled, is the end of it. So he just drained it every time. So he'd let me have the, the car and give me a dollar. And I'd come to town and get a dollar, uh, 50 cents worth of gas and go to the movie and maybe a hamburger. And sometimes I'd carry a girl with me. <laughs> We'd get by on a dollar on a date. Now, that was tough going, but we made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's been a few years since anybody could go on a date for a dollar. Right. Counting the gas. Gas, right. you cost that much for 19 cents a gallon. 19 cents a gallon. And you could get quarters worth and make the trip. When you when you look back in your lifetime, tell me a little bit about the changes, the good and the bad. I know not everything. We we chuckle about some of the things that we did in the past and I'm slowly getting to that age when I look back and right. and um, think of that some people call them the good old times, but a lot of times they weren't good. No, they weren't. It was hard. But but it was so different. Uh, a neighbor was a neighbor. And if you asked a man to help you do something, he'd help you. If he told you, I'll be there at 6.30 in the morning, you could look out and he'd be out there. And times was just different back then. And we'd leave that old house out there on the, on the farm and come to town on Saturday night to get $2 worth of groceries or two or three dollars worth of groceries, and never locked the house, never even locked it. We didn't have much or nothing for them to get, <laughs> but but we, if they had got it, well, it wouldn't have mattered, you know, we didn't lock the house. 
Daddy said if he wants in, he's going to tear the lock off and said, you might as well leave it unlocked, saving the trouble and saving you having to put on a new lock. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, did you all raise your own beef yes, or sir. hogs? Yes, sir. We had, that's the way we lived. We had a, the man we worked for give us a garden. We had a garden. We had two cows to milk, and he gave Dad three hogs to kill. And we raised an acre about a garden. And Mother canned all year long, and I'd help her in the afternoons, go and pick corn and shuck it and silk it for her. She'd cut it off and can it. Now, we didn't freeze it. We didn't have no electricity. Right. We didn't have no electricity, no refrigerator, or none of that. She'd can it in fruit jars. And then we had the smokehouse that we fill full of meat in the fall of the year when it got cold enough to kill hogs. It had to be uh, cold before you could kill them. Well, that brings on a good question. I hear a lot of people talking about this show's being taped uh, today in the middle of August. It'll show in September. But a lot of people are talking about the weather conditions are so much different today than they were, say, 25 and 50 years yes. ago. When I was a boy, we skated on the old farm ponds all winter long about. We had the, the, lots of times they froze over. Now, not all the time, but a whole lot of time we had some real cold weather and lots of snow. We had a lot of snow. We don't have that like no, we used no. to. And uh, one Saturday, one Christmas Saturday, Dad said, you and I are going to town. And I said, all right. So. He said, fill up the old car while I shave. So we come to town and got Christmas. And uh, on the way back, it started to snow. And as we got to Breezy Hill out there, what we call Winston Hill, Breezy Hill, we bogged down. And Dad said, well, ain't nothing to do but put the chains on. So we got out and put the chains on and got on home about dark. It took us forever to get there. <laughs> But uh, I never shall forget that Saturday. It was one of the happiest times of my life because we had all kind of stuff he had bought, you know, and, and we, were, we was really tickled. I was and my sister was. And a typical, and a typical Christmas gift probably was what? Clothes? A pair of gloves, a pair of overalls, a pair of shoes. Maybe a box of sparklers and one pack of firecrackers. Apple and orange. That was it. I don't know that the children of today would appreciate that no, kind of Christmas. No, they want a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange you mention that. You you worked uh, for 30 or 40 years. I believe my note said you worked 40 years for Walker Chevrolet. 45. 45. Yes. And I know before that you had <clears throat> you owned a service station yes. on Hillsborough Road for yes. a while. Yes. Now where was it located? Right beside the, the Jeep store there. Right there, that old building beside Harpeth Jeep. Uh, I believe it's a Gulf station. It was a Gulf when I run it, yes. When I come back from the Army, I was had been driving a truck for Mr. Howard Johnson that run Franklin Concrete before I went to the Army. And uh, when I come back, he said, I got a service station I want you to take. I said, Mr. Howard, I ain't got the money to, to open a service station. He said, I didn't say anything about money. I said, well, I know I've got to have some money. He said, you, i tell you what you do. You go up to William County Bank and talk to Mr. Joe Pinkerton and Mr. John McCord and tell them I sent you up there. So I went up there, went in there, half scared to death, and they said... Uh, now, how old were you about uh, this time? I, well, I was about... Uh, 25? Uh, yeah, somewhere along there. I just got back from the Army. No, I hadn't been to the Army. Yes, I had. I'd been to the Army. I just got back. and. Uh, they said, what, how much money you need? I said, well, I don't know. They said, well, Mr. Howard's done signed a note here, and you to tell us how much, and we'll fill it in. <laughs> and I said, well, I really don't know, but I ex suspect I'll need right at four or $5,000. They said, that ain't no problem. So they said, go, go down there and get started. Write your checks, and I'll catch them when they come through. And that's the way I went. And I done real well there for several years. I was in there about eight, eight years, I guess. And then they opened that Hundred Oaks down there. And J.C. Penney and Montgomery Ward 
took care of me. <laughs> they they could still sell stuff cheaper than I could buy it. Yeah, a yeah, bigger outfit. Right. So shortly thereafter, you worked, I know, a little while in Nashville, and then you went over to Walker. Right. Now, the Walker you started at, was it on Columbia Avenue or downtown Franklin? Columbia Avenue. The one that's down there for... Right. But I drove a little bit for them when they was up there where Mapco is now. Mm -hmm. I drove some for Mr. Billy Sr. Drove some trucks to Knoxville and stuff like that. Well, you're you're still driving. Yes, sir. I still see driving. you around here <laughs> you're bringing people in and getting car tags yeah, and trying to stay busy. You think you'll ever retire? No, sir. I don't aim to. Not as long as I can get around. I know your wife is uh, deceased. Right. Was she local? Uh, well, she was raised down in the First District. Down Centerville. Down in Centerville, Fairview area. Yeah, right in that area. Yeah. And what was her maiden name? Beard. She, she was a beard. She was Doyle Beard. You know Doyle? I do know uh, that. Uh, the, the, that Ann's husband, Doyle. Yeah. Oh, uh, was her brother. Doyle was her brother. And you all were married how many years? About 45. Close to it. That's that's great. Yeah. The over over the process of uh, working around here, I know you've seen a lot of change. You've seen a lot of development come yes. to town. Uh, you've seen a lot of farmland uh, be gobbled up with subdivisions. Yes, sir. If you had to say it was good or bad, what would you say? Well, I'd have to say I guess it's good because back in those days, you couldn't get a job. There weren't no jobs. You farmed or else you had to go to Nigel to work at Grand Dudley Stove Company or the old Dorch out here. Yeah. And, and before you go very far and I get off that thought, the old Dorch is what we call the factory now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they made stoves? Yes, sir. And, cook uh, stoves. Cook stoves. Ranges, mostly. Mostly rangers. But anyway, you were saying, I'm sorry, you, you might have to go to Nashville and you could get a job. There were hard times here. Yeah, there were no jobs here, only farming. Uh, or, you know, the service station. And there weren't many service stations. There just wasn't much work in this county. Now, in 1963, I believe, the CPS come in to, to Franklin. And that really helped this, this town in this county. Lots of, my wife worked there, and it was it really helped us, you know, with the three kids and her and I was working at Walker and she worked at CPS and it worked out pretty good that way. The the records on you say you worked at a cheese factory also. Yes, sir. As in high school. And where was that located? Right at? over here on Ninth Avenue, I believe it's Nine Eleventh. Eleventh where they're building all those apartments now, right in there. Brownstone, no. and there was literally a cheese yes, factory. Sir. It's the we, first time I knew that. We made cheese there, and, uh, and uh, they was, I was working there while I was in high school at night, dumping milk, and they was making a lot of cheese for the Army back in those days. Where was the factory at, right in that area? Uh, well, we made cheese right there, huh. and then they had another one at Woodbury. A lot of it, a lot of that stuff, after we made the cheese, was shipped to Woodbury. What was the name of it? Was it? Wilson Company. Wilson Company Cheese. Wilson and Company. Well, that's a new one. I, I had never, as long as I've been here, I didn't know there was a cheese factory Yes, sir. Here. And uh, lots of those old farmers out here in the country would come in there at night with their milk. It, they didn't have any place to, to store it only in a creek somewhere. And they had to get it in there and get it dumped and into the coolers and things. But it would run out there in a, in a milk can, you know. So I dumped milk. Some of those trucks would come in there at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And he'd dump that milk. And, and then go home and sleep and get up and go to school the next day. Yes. Now that was after, I, after the farm, you know. He lived down uh, here in town. Yeah, we moved to town, so. Dad, like I say, Dad, he worked for lots of different people. Uh, he drove a truck for Mr. Tanner, Jim Tanner, and he had a he had a horse barn right there on 11th Avenue, where Colony House is now, and I had a track there, 
and we, uh, you know, to train horses. Right. Here. And we we hauled hay in and out of there, and hauled horses there. And How about the Harleysdale farm? We um, today, I mean, it's owned by Franklin, Franklin City, and they're doing a lot of work out there. And uh, um, at one time, that must have been a big a big operation. It I was. Said. I've hauled a lot of straw in there for the Harlandsdale. This fella Tanner was farming all over the county and we he bailed a lot of straw and I've hauled a lot of straw to that farm. Now, but it was, was it ever a cattle farm or no. mostly just a horse Most, farm? Mostly horse. And the walking horse was the, probably the, the right. big horse back right. in those yeah. days. Yeah. Midnight Sun. He, I saw him many a time. He was a beautiful horse. Well, People, a lot of people here, you might tell them a little bit about Midnight Sun. Uh, that's kind of the uh, sire to all right. of the good walking horses yes. for the last uh, 25 or 30 years. Yes. Um, in fact, there's a monument, if I remember correctly, yes. out there. He's buried right near the barn. Jim Hayes uh, yeah. has told me the story. I think his family might right. have lived out in that area. Yeah. They lived over in the house way over there, kind of to the side of the farm. The old house is still there where they lived. I think somebody lives in it. The, you mentioned, you mentioned going to the store. Uh, of course, we didn't have Kroger's and Publix no. back there. No. Um, and I'm not real sure when Mr. Little, Jumbo Little, uh, opened up his store. But the, there were some stores around during that time. Yeah, country stores. Yeah, country stores. There's one at Harper out there. And then Mr. Glenn Obey, one over there about Southall. You've heard of Mr. Glenn oh, Obey? Oh, I have. Yeah. So he'd go in, Dad would go in there and get stuff and tell him, Mr. Glenn, charge that to me. And he'd say, write it on the wall there, whatever you're getting. And I'll put it in the ledger after a while. He had a big pad up there and he'd, he'd write his name and whatever he got. And he'd go, he never would come check it. Mr. Peach, you know, you hear a lot of stories about people and, of course, honesty was a big thing back, right. back then. And it's a big thing with me today. Right. But there had to be some people that just weren't honest in well, the old days. there probably were, but uh, I wasn't associated with them. Uh, most of the people I knew and was around, a handshake is all you needed. You didn't sign no papers. Just like I... Uh, when I first come home from the Army, I found a 50 model Ford down there, his old car. And I went up there and told Full Arnold at the bank, I said, Full, I, I got a Ford down there and it's a pretty thing. It's light green and I sure do want it. <laughs> he said, well, what are you waiting on? I said, I, the money, I ain't got the money. I want to see if I can borrow the money. He said, how much is it? I said, $695. $695. He said, tell you what you do. You go down there and give Bass Jefferson and James Cover, give them a check. And I'll catch it when it comes through. And fix the papers and you come back up here and sign it. Drive your new Ford back up here and sign the papers. <laughs> so that's what I done. And we shook hands and that was it. And you paid him back. Yes, sir. Quick you as I could. Well, you said something there I never thought about. I, my, um, my mother's still living, and she's 87 years old, lives up in uh, Knoxville by herself on a little acreage we've got up there. And I never heard the expression, uh, picked up the note, or you picked up the check. You really didn't have a checking account. You had a counter check, I right. guess, that yeah. was at each yeah. business. Yeah. And so you just made it out and signed it, and then when it went in, they picked it up. Right. And most most businesses had three checks, three counter checks on their desk. Harpen National Bank, Williamson County Bank, College, Bank of College Grove. And when you'd buy something and want a check, they'd say, which bank? And some few would say, don't make no difference. <laughs> <laughs> and the, but I always had to say, Williamson County, because that's where my connections was. <laughs> well, we've only got two or three minutes left to talk. I've enjoyed it. 
but there's probably something you might want to talk about in the last couple of minutes and uh, that I've overlooked. Anything? No, no, you pretty well covered it, I think. Uh, it's, uh, like I say, uh, back in those days, it, uh, a man's word was his bond. And that's the way I was raised. And uh, one thing I did learn, and I will never forget from Dad, was if two men was talking, don't walk up and butt into them. Don't walk up in between them. Stand back on your side till the man get through talking. And boy, he would get in your hair quick for that. <laughs> but uh, no, I think we pretty well covered it. It was, it was a good town and it was a lot of good people here and there still are. But there's so many I don't know anymore. At one time I knew about everybody and knew most of their telephone numbers. I remember when Walker's number was 202. 202. You picked up a receiver and the operator say, number please, and you'd say 202. And you'd pick up a receiver and you'd say, Harper Ford, I mean, uh, walk, uh, operator, you'd say 777, Harper Ford's number. Well, it's certainly more complicated than that today. Right. Life was um, uh, life was probably a lot simpler back then. Oh yeah, it was. But it was harder way of living. It was harder, but yet I enjoyed it. I could tell it. It was good times, and uh, we had plenty to eat, and had all the love you could ever want. My mother and dad, my sister. We had all the love you could ever imagine, and plenty to eat, but we didn't have no greenback. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, I'd say you weren't alone, Mr. Right, Peach. Right. Well, let me say but this. But I didn't know it. No, I, I didn't I, either. I didn't know, well, I thought everybody was poor, but they weren't, but I <laughs> thought they were. Well, Mr. Peach, our time is about gone. We probably got just, we got a little bit more than 30 seconds. I want to say thank you for taking time out. Yes, sir. Taking time out to come and talk and, and let people hear about Williamson County and our people. You're, you're, uh, you and Mr. Moody and Ms. Bowman and Dr. Wellaby, all of these people that we've had and we'll continue to have people are people that have made Williamson County, Franklin, Brentwood, College Grove, right. uh, South Hall, what they are today. And right. it was your parents prior to you and I, I just want to say thank you for being on our show and thank you for what you've offered to Williamson County all these many years. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed it. I'm Roger Sanderson and it's time for us to go and we'll see you the next time with one of our special guests, one of our legends, one of our own. Have a good day.